The Avenger, a World War II torpedo bomber instrumental in helping defeat the Japanese Navy. Initially developed for the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps, it also saw action with several other Allied naval and air forces around the world. After the war, some were abandoned to aircraft graveyards, but many were put into civilian service. Today, only a few dozen TBM Avengers still fly. Here at the Valiant Air Command Museum in Titusville, volunteers are working to make one more Avenger airworthy. Our particular plane was built in 1945 in July, or that's when the Navy took it. It saw very little service, in fact spent most of its time in storage yards as far as we can tell. During the end of the war, there were several of these planes available and the forestry services took a lot of them and made water bombers out of them. And this one in particular did belong to the California Forestry Service. They took the Bombay doors off of it, installed the water tanks, and they used it for fire as far as. This particular plane was at some point after that was transferred to the Georgia Forestry Service, and they used it to spray bugs. There was a museum in northern Georgia that had the airplane, and it sat pretty much outside for a number of years, unused. The first decision that had to be made was whether to make the Avenger a static display or restore it to fly again, a much more costly proposition. We did start the engine because that was the turning point as to what we're going to do with it. A rebuilt engine for a plane like this will run anywhere from $40,000 to $60,000, and that's a start. So knowing that we had a good engine, then it was well worth the investment. We stripped it down, it took several months just to get everything off of the airplane, and then we started the ground up restoration of the airplane. The more we got into the plane, the more we realized that it was a lot more expensive than what we thought. All the hydraulics needed to be redone, all the flight controls needed to be redone, the landing gear needed to be pulled and tested. I mean, it was just a monumental thing. But a little by little, we did it. When you get started with something like that, and you've accomplished so much and you see another issue, what do you do? Well, you keep going because at some point you've got to get through it. And that's what we did. The Avengers restoration began in 2004. After more than 10 years and thousands of man hours of restoration, it was time for the first flight. Coming. Well, of course, everybody's nervous. Now, we've got a lot of years in this thing and we don't really know how it's going to react once we really put the pressure on it. All of us are lined up out by the runway, and I know everybody had white knuckles. I know they did, because you could feel the tension in the air. I can only imagine what the pilot was feeling. <laughs> First day is, there's nothing like it. It's, a, it's an exciting day because it's, it's not something I have had experience in before. I do have a lot of tailwheel time in other warbirds, but nothing in the, in the Avenger. So it's a cross between a little bit of fear, anxiety, because you're, you're like, well, it's an older airplane and inherently it's, you know, old parts. When you start pouring the power to this, and it's an extremely big motor, very torquey motor, so it is so much noise and it's loud the plane starts shaking and the canopy's moving and it is just different sounds and vibrations than you're used to. The tail comes up for the takeoff and once you start lifting off, it is, I don't know, it's the most exhilarating feeling because you just, you, you don't know how it's gonna fly. When it left the ground, everybody just kind of a little sigh of relief, but then everybody's watching it as it circles. The plan is we're gonna make one round around the airport and we're gonna land the airplane and then we're gonna look it over. It's an interesting plane to fly. There's not many flying anymore. So compared to other aircraft, extremely heavy. Heavy ailerons, heavy flying, big motor, lots of power to carry a lot of bombs and accessories during World War II. Not overly maneuverable. It was a point and shoot type airplane. Slow at rolling, slow at, at turning left and right, slow at climbing, but it's a dream to fly. A bit heavier on landing than you would think. Very nice landing airplane also. And everybody is white knuckled until we hear it go chirp chirp when it hits the ground and it's a sigh of relief. You've got everybody's reputation, you've got a guy's life in your hands, and he thinks that you're good enough, or he, he relies on you enough that he was willing to take the airplane up. So yeah, it's an emotional deal. 
The Valiant Air Command's TBM Avenger is currently undergoing more testing, engine work, and flight time before it can fly long distances to air shows. With even more time and money demanded to repair this war relic, the question has to be why? Why put all this work and money into this aircraft? Because of what it is. The airplanes that we choose to have at the museum need to have historical certificates. That's what we do. This particular plane was one of the, one of the planes that actually turned the war in the Pacific. George Bush Sr. flew one of the planes very much like this one and he was shot down and ended up ditching in the South Pacific. Flight 19 was a flight where five Navy TBM Avengers were lost in the Atlantic Ocean. So it was an obvious choice for us. This is the one we need to, to work with. When the plane starts, the sound of the engine, the smoke, it's just all part of it. That's why we do it. See full episodes of One Central Florida the first Thursday of each month at 8 p.m.